I've been seeing a lot of posts lately about how people have lost days, weeks, months, or even years worth of projects because they only have their local copy of their project. This is incredibly sad because it's very simple to have a remote version of the project with redundancy for absolutely free. In this video, we're going to take a look at an incredibly powerful tool called Git that will allow you to have your projects hosted on the cloud. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality by making sure your projects are not destroyed when you mess up something, your hardware dies, or some software just corrupts your files. Version control is something that's very popular and mandatory for any team-based project, but it can also save your booty if you're working by yourself. I've personally used Git in a professional environment for many, many years, and I've used complex branching strategies, but for your solo dev project, you don't need to get into all the depths of how do you do all kinds of stuff in Git, you can really follow a simple workflow and make sure that your project will never be lost. If you are working with a team, then I would definitely recommend that you follow some kind of branching strategy like Gitflow to make sure that your project and your repository stay organized with a minimal amount of conflicts. So first let's talk about what does version control mean for your project? You can think of it as basically just taking incremental snapshots of your project as you make changes. We're specifically gonna be using Git in this example, but there's a lot of different kinds of version controls. There's like SVN, there's, I think Plastic is integrated into Unity and many other ones. So it's not super important which one that you choose, as long as you're choosing one that can be hosted somewhere for free. In this case, Git is one of the most popular ones in the world. so very easy to find free cloud hosting for Git. Keeping in mind that version control is just keeping a list of snapshots of your repository. That should be really obvious how this can help you if something bad happens on your local machine. If you have hardware failure, if you just accidentally delete some files, you can simply go back to the last snapshot and you've lost a minimal amount of effort. Let's go over just basics of how does Git work at a really high level. We don't need to drill down into the depths of all of the things that you can do in Git. We're going to get into what I call the solo dev workflow, which is a really simplistic way of working with Git where you don't need to know about almost anything about it except a couple commands or the UI that we're going to look at a little bit later. If you end up running into a situation where there's a lot of stuff going wrong, then because we're using one of the most popular version control systems in the world, there's a lot of resources on the internet to help you out with that. So when we start using Git, it's really important to know that there are two copies of your project one is on your local and one is on the remote server. So we call our local machine the local and the remote server the remote. Let's take a look at the solo dev workflow. Step one is you make whatever changes you're gonna make. Implement new features, fix some bugs, experiment with stuff, whatever you need to do. Once you've completed that or you're done working for the day, step two is commit. You commit your changes to the local repository. That's a one click of a button in Visual Studio. Whenever you commit, you provide some message just to say, hey, you know, this is where I am, something like that. So that way, if you need to come back later, you understand what's the state of the project whenever you check out that revision. Really, how frequently you make commits and how frequently you push is entirely up to you. I personally do it on a feature level, but that runs a risk of if something happens and let's say it takes me two weeks to implement some feature. If something happens in that two week period, I lose all of my work because I didn't commit anything and I didn't push anything. If you make commits every day, then at most you're gonna lose one day's worth of work as long as you push it. So choose your length of time that you wanna make commits for and follow that pattern. Step three is you push those changes to the remote. If you're working again as a solo dev, this is all that you need to do. Make changes, commit changes, push changes. From Visual Studio, you can do commit and push in one step, which means there's really only two steps to do. One, make your changes. Two, click a button on the Visual Studio UI and you're done. All these words I'm using, I'm using intentionally because these are the names of commands in the Git command line. Personally, I don't use the Git command line for almost anything. I always use a UI because it's just easier to use a UI. You can orchestrate stuff where you make multiple commands with one click of a button, it's just easier. Because most likely if you're watching this video, you probably already have a project and you wanna back up that project. Let's take a look at how do you initialize Git into an existing project without having to start completely from scratch. First, let's prepare a repository. The very first thing you need to do is download Git. If you don't have Git, you need it to use it. So there's a link in the description to exactly that, download Git, and it works on all operating systems, Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever you need, they have a copy for you. While you're downloading and installing that, we can create what's called a Git ignore. This tells Git, hey, 
don't track these files because maybe they're like build files. You don't want to commit your build files all the time. You can rebuild those at any time. The Unity library folder is one that you calculate locally on your own machine. So that shouldn't go in the repository. I don't know all the stuff that's not supposed to be there. I use the one that GitHub gives us. So that's the Git ignore that I have. And I'll have a link to that as well. It looks like this. All this does is tells Git ignore these files. Git ignore, it makes sense. One other thing that you can do to add stuff here is maybe if you have an open source project and you have some assets that you are not allowed to redistribute, you can ignore those from the Git repository and then your project can be free open source while you're still using assets for maybe the final build. In my own videos, sometimes you'll see that because I have some assets from the asset store like the Unity Particle Pack, According to Unity EULA, I'm not allowed to redistribute those. So I'll always exclude those from the GitHub repository and tell you to download that yourself. All you have to do to set up this Git ignore is create a new file called .git ignore and paste the contents of what GitHub gives us into that file and make sure you created this at the root project level. So that's the same level that the assets folder is in, not inside the assets folder, at the top level of your project where the asset folder is. At this point, you should have Git installed. So what we're going to do is initialize the repository. We're going to look at two ways to do this. One, using the git command line, which is actually the only time I use a command line because GitHub tells me all the commands I need to run. And I just copy paste them. You can also do this through the Visual Studio GUI, and we'll look at that in a little bit as well. So GitHub tells me these are the commands to run. Git init, git add dot, git commit dash m, giving me some message of a commit. Git branch dash capital M, and then the name of the branch, main in this case, really what you call this doesn't matter. You can stick to main and just not have a problem. And you add a remote using git remote add origin and then the origin URL and git push dash u origin main. I really, all of these commands, I copy paste them every single time. If we're gonna use the Visual Studio UI, what we can do is go to the git changes panel, click create git repository. And in my case, I've already linked a GitHub account, but what you can do is either link your own GitHub account if that's what you're using, or you can add a remote URL. So we'll click existing remote. And at this stage, you get to choose which provider you want. There's GitHub that is extremely popular for open source projects. It's a little bit less popular if you want to have a private project because they're a little bit more restrictive on what you can put there and how many features they give you. For the open source projects, they give you basically everything for free, which is really nice. But for your game, you're probably not going to have a fully open source game. So I actually use Azure DevOps instead for all of my projects for games. On GitHub, if you make it a public repository, that makes it public so anybody can access it. So all of my tutorial repositories are public on GitHub, while my games are private repositories on Azure DevOps. Whichever provider you choose, the process to create a repository is very simple. We'll take a look at how to do this on Azure DevOps because it's totally free for up to five people and you get unlimited space. And I find it to be very useful and comes with a lot of extra features that if you grow your team, you might want to take advantage of. So once you've created an Azure DevOps account, you'll click create new project at the top right, give it a name, make sure it's private and click create. And now you've created a new remote Git repository. Simple as that. If you go to the left side of the screen and click on repos, you'll see that it gives us a URL here. We're going to copy that URL and paste it into the remote of the Visual Studio. And that gives us the ability to now click create and push. Once we do that, it'll probably ask you to log in. Just provide the same credentials that you use to log in to the Azure portal. We have our initial copy of our repository as it is today, backed up on Azure DevOps, so on the cloud. So that gives us our remote hosted repository with redundancy where they're guaranteeing essentially that we're not gonna lose our code. We start following the workflow that we outlined earlier of making incremental changes, committing and pushing those changes, then we're not gonna lose our project with any more code than the last snapshot that we had. So now we've covered how do we set up our project so it'll be hosted on a cloud, but we've not really covered how do I get it back in the event of a disaster. So let's walk through a couple of the use cases of how do we recover if we get into a bad state. So the first state maybe that everyone's most concerned about is my computer dies, my hard drive's fried, maybe my entire disk gets corrupted, just your project's gone, there's no way to get it back anymore. What we can do is use the command line to do git clone and then use that URL URL that we got from Azure DevOps, and that will copy the project back down to our local, just reopen it in Unity. It'll probably have to do like you did re-import all, but at least you're back up and running. From Visual Studio, you can also just say clone new repository and paste in that URL and it's done. In the event that maybe you deleted something that you weren't supposed to delete, you know, you did like shift delete in Windows where it's gone, it's not even in the recycle bin. 
something like that, or you made some irreparable changes, like you're using some visual scripting tool and you just deleted a bunch of stuff and it's gone. There are ways to revert individual files. You can do that very simply through the Git UI on Visual Studio. I don't know how to do that on the command line, so I always use the UI for this. You can simply select the file you want, click revert, and you've reverted that one specific file back to where it was before. You can also undo specific lines of changes in a file. If you're making a bunch of code changes, you can say, oops, I forgot what happened there. Bring up the Git UI in Visual Studio, show a diff, and just undo the individual changes on a line by line basis that you want to do. If you've totally messed up your project and you need to go back to the last working copy, you can run the following commands. Git reset head dash dash hard and git prune that will remove any new files that were added as well. Or from Visual Studio, you can just click in the git changes panel, undo changes, and that'll reset everything back to where it was when your last commit was. It's really important on these two parts though that you keep in mind this is gonna irreversibly undo any changes you have on your local since that last commit. That's why it's really important that you commit and push often because if you run one of these commands that I just outlined, those are really dangerous operations to undo any local changes that you have. There are a lot more powerful features in Git that I didn't cover in this video. Remember that this is targeting solo developers. So the workflow I've outlined is if you're not working with a team, if you are working with a team, I highly recommend that you follow some kind of branching strategy like Gitflow. I've got a link in the description to that as well. That way you can more reasonably handle changes, branches, new features, and of course, managing merge conflicts. And that's something that if you've used version control before, you know is sometimes really painful. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. I am so grateful for your support. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. And that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you want to join this cause, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, get your name up here on the screen, and get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier. Speaking of those awesome tier supporters, I have Andrew Bowen, Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Paul Berry, Matt Parkin, and Ivan. I'm so grateful for your support. Thank you. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing and also sharing this video with a friend because I've seen so many people say that they've lost so much data, so many years worth of projects. It, it's really horribly sad. So share this with somebody who you know isn't backing up their project. Let them know there's a way that's free, minimal effort to have it working. Just save your projects, please. I don't want to see any more. I don't want to see any more where people are saying, oh, I've lost seven years worth of projects. That's really, it's really heartbreaking. So please share this with somebody who needs it. And you know, new videos posted every tutorial Tuesday. I'll see you next week.